Hi, and welcome to this series of lessons on the parts of speech. My name is Ganesh, and in this first lesson, I'm going to give you a quick introduction to the eight parts of speech. In the following lessons, we'll learn more in detail about each part of speech. Now, before we start, just remember, if you have any questions at all, you just have to let me know in the comments section below, and I will talk to you there. Okay, so first of all, what is a part of speech? Well, a part of speech is just the name given to a word based on the job that it does in a sentence. Think of uh, parts of speech as being kind of like job titles. Just like a person can be a teacher or a doctor or a lawyer, a, a, a word can be a verb, an adjective, a noun, etc., depending on the job that it does in a sentence. And these can be really useful to learn because when you're studying grammar, you will come across terms like these. You will come across terms like nouns, verbs, and adjectives. And if you know what they mean, it can help you to speed up your study of grammar. All right, so how many parts of speech are there? There are eight parts of speech, and we start by talking about the verb. We start with the verb because verbs are probably the most important words in the English language. And that is for two reasons. First, every sentence in English must have a verb. You cannot have sentences without verbs in English. And the second reason is that only verbs have tenses. Now, I'm sure you know about uh, past tense, present tense, and future tense. That's how we talk about different times. And to do that, we change the forms of verbs. So verbs are really important. But what does a verb do? Well, a verb is a word that shows an action or a state. State means a situation. Now, for example, uh, in the sentence, Dylan plays tennis three times a week. In this sentence, the verb is play because that's the action. And we're saying plays because for he, she, and it, we say plays. We add the S to the verb in the present tense. So Dylan plays. Uh, in this next sentence, I am a teacher. Can you tell me which is the verb? The verb is am. That's basically just the verb be or to be, but we say I am, you are, he is, etc. So I am a teacher. Now I want you to notice a very important difference between these two sentences. Notice that in the first sentence we are talking about a physical action because playing is something that we do physically. But in the second sentence we are not talking about any physical action. We're just saying I am a teacher. We call that a state. Okay, that means a situation. So verbs can show actions or they can show states or situations. Those are the two types of verbs. Okay, the next part of speech is the noun. A noun is the name given to a person, place, animal, thing, feeling, or idea. For example, here's a sentence with a lot of nouns. Rosie went to Malta on vacation with her family last year. Can you identify all the nouns in this sentence? Well, the first noun is Rosie. It's the name of a person. The second noun is Malta. Malta is the name of a place. It's actually a beautiful uh, small little island country uh, in Europe. Okay, so Malta is a place. The next noun is vacation. Vacation is the name given to a type of trip that people take. And the noun after that is family. What's a family? A family is a group of people who are related. Mothers, fathers, sons, daughters, brothers, sisters, etc. And the last noun in the sentence is year. A year is just 365 days or the time that it takes the earth to go around the sun. Now, of course, nouns can also be uh, animals like dogs or cats 
or a noun could be a thing like watch, pen, t-shirt, etc. Or it could be a feeling such as love or anger. Those are all nouns. What's a pronoun though? Well, a pronoun is a word that replaces a noun. Replaces means it takes the place of a noun. But you might ask, why should a pronoun do that? Well, take a look at this sentence. Melvin is at the movies with Melvin's girlfriend. Melvin really enjoys spending time with Melvin's girlfriend. Now, of course, that sounds really stupid. And that is because, can you tell me why? Can you tell me what the problem is in that sentence? Well, the problem is that we keep repeating Melvin and Melvin's girlfriend. And that is very unnatural. We don't talk like that. And to avoid that kind of repetition, we can use pronouns. So can you tell me where you would use pronouns in those two sentences? Or we can say, Melvin is at the movies with his girlfriend. He really enjoys spending time with her. There are three pronouns there. His, he, and her. Did you get all of those? Okay, now I want you to notice that um, the pronoun he is in the subject position. He is the subject of the verb enjoy. Who enjoys? He enjoys. And uh, the pronoun her is in the object position. Now to replace a noun in the subject position, like Melvin, for example, we use what are called subject pronouns. These are I, you, we, they, he, she, and it. And to replace a noun in the object position, can you guess what we use? We use object pronouns. Those are me, you, us, them, him, her, and it. Now there are other pronouns in English, such as his, hers, this, that, etc. But we will talk about them in more detail when we come to the lesson on pronouns. For now, just remember that a pronoun replaces a noun uh, to avoid repetition and to make our speech sound more natural. Okay, the next part of speech is the adjective. An adjective is a word that gives us information about a noun or a pronoun. Uh, have a look at this uh, sentence. They drive an amazing big red sports car. Here, the noun that we are interested in is car. So can you identify all the adjectives that give information about car? Well, if you said amazing, big, red, and sports, you are correct because all of those are adjectives. And if you look at them closely, you will realize that these give us answers to questions like what color, what size, what type, etc. The adjective amazing gives us the answer to the question, what is your opinion of the car? Now, if you ask me, what's your opinion of the car? I would tell you, it's amazing. What size is the car? It's big. What's the color? It's red. And uh, what type of car is it? It's a sports car. Okay, now that's all great. But I don't know if you noticed, there's actually one more adjective in this sentence. And that is the word an. Now the words a, an, and the are called articles in English. And articles are also adjectives because they give us information about the nouns that come after them. In this sentence, for example, we know that they drive one car. We know that because we said an amazing big red uh, sports car. So remember that adjectives give us information about nouns and pronouns and they answer questions like what type, what color, what size, etc. Okay, but what are uh, adverbs? Now when I learned grammar in school, I was taught that adjectives give information about nouns 
and adverbs give information about verbs. And in fact, a lot of teachers still teach it that way. But the thing is, that's only half correct because an adverb can give information about a verb, but it can also give information about an adjective or even another adverb. So these are really talented words, you see. They can do uh, a lot of things. And adverbs usually answer questions like when, why, how, in what way, etc. Uh, let me show you a sentence so you can see all the different things that adverbs can do. Yesterday evening, we walked somewhat slowly in a very beautiful garden. In this sentence, the first adverb is yesterday evening. That shows us when the action happened. The action here is walk. That's the verb. There's another adject, uh, pardon me, adverb, slowly, and that shows us how the action happened. How did we walk? We walked slowly. So both yesterday evening and slowly tell us about the verb walk. But notice that you can further ask how slowly did we walk? Did we walk very slowly or a little slowly? The answer is somewhat slowly. Somewhat means something like a little. Now notice that somewhat is actually giving us information about slowly. How slowly? Somewhat slowly. So that's an adverb that gives information about another adverb. And there's yet another one, very. That adverb is giving us information about beautiful. Beautiful is an adjective. Okay, so you see all the different kinds of things that adverbs can do. All right, the next type, uh, the next part of speech is the preposition. Prepositions are words like in, on, at, by, from, with, before, and after. And these words help us to show relationships in time, place, and position. For example, Here's a common thing that we say to people that we know a lot. I'll see you at the office on Monday. There are two prepositions in this sentence. Can you say which those are? The prepositions are at and on. The first preposition at shows us the place. Where? At the office. And the second uh, preposition on shows us the time. When? On Monday. So that's what prepositions do. They help us to show relationships in time, place, and position. Now students sometimes confuse prepositions with conjunctions, but these are very different. Conjunctions are words like and, but, or, so, and because, and they help to connect ideas. Uh, for example, in the sentence, Clara and Jasmine are best friends. Can you say which the conjunction is? The conjunction is and. And it helps to connect Clara and Jasmine, both of which are nouns. But conjunctions can even connect sentences. For example, I didn't go to school today because I don't feel very well. Here, there are two sentences. We call them clauses. The second clause, I don't feel very well, is the reason. And the first clause, I didn't go to school today, is the result. The conjunction here is because, and it shows us this reason and result relationship. Notice that we can also say, I don't feel very well today, so I didn't go to school. Uh, in that case, the conjunction would be so. All right, the last part of speech that we will look at is the interjection. Interjections are words that have no real meaning, but they help us to show sudden emotion or exclamation. For example, the interjection, wow, shows um, excitement, surprise or amazement. The interjection uh, shows frustration or anger. Like if I'm trying to open a jar of 
cookies or a jar of pickles. I can't open it. I might say, ah, I just can't do it. That shows I'm angry or I'm frustrated. Some other common interjections are ouch, oops, hey, and hi. These last two words are used when we meet someone or when we want to call out to someone. For example, I can say, hi, how are you? Or, hey, John, over here. Look, I'm standing over here. So I want to call out to John. Okay. All right, so those are the eight parts of speech. Let's do a quick recap of what we've learned today. Uh, we started with the verb. The verb is a word that shows an action or a state. State means situation. A noun is a person, place, animal, thing, feeling, or idea. A pronoun replaces a noun. And we use pronouns so that our speech is not repetitive and more natural. Adjectives are words that give us information about nouns or pronouns, and they answer questions like what kind, how many, what color, what size, etc. Adverbs give us information about verbs or adjectives or even other adverbs. Prepositions are words that help us to show relationships in time, place, or position. Conjunctions are words like and, but, because, etc. And they help us to connect ideas. Those can be nouns, or they can even be verbs, and even whole sentences. So you can connect any two ideas using conjunctions. And finally, interjections are words with no real meaning, and they help us to show exclamation or sudden emotion. Just remember that these are used less commonly in speech and more commonly, pardon me, they're used more commonly in speech and not so much in writing. When we write them, we usually put an exclamation mark. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Remember to subscribe to this channel and I'll see you in the next lesson.